Metroid Prime Trilogy on Wii offers a unique way to play the Wii Mode and Nunchuck. Not a bad way to play at all by any means, but when I wanted to stream Metroid Prime on Go to Bedcast, I didn't want to sit in my computer chair using motion controls for two hours a night because it didn't go too well the last time I did it. What the hell, Link? I'm holding the Wii Mode forward. Oh my God, no wonder it's fucking up is because the controls are not calibrated again. I've been researching this practically all year, but I couldn't find any information on a mod to play Metroid Prime Trilogy with keyboard and mouse support. I feel the demand for this would be moderately high, but all I could find were janky dolphin controller configurations and none of them felt good at all. It's far too limiting. It cannot be done well enough with a simple configuration file. Dolphin has incredibly in-depth control configurations, but it's not enough. Then I finally came across this Reddit post, and by the title I see why I can never find it. This is it. This was the proper keyboard and mouse support for the Metroid Prime Trilogy for Metroid Primes 1 and 2. As of right now, Metroid Prime 3 support isn't there just yet. This is a modded version of Dolphin that lets you do it. If you want to get right to it, I'll link the Reddit page and the GitHub page in the description. Everything you need to know is on those pages, but let me tell you about setting it up, my biggest gripe, and what I did to fix that gripe. First off, let me tell you after playing the entire first game with this mod, mouse and keyboard is merely another option for playing the game. It's not the definitive way to play, especially with how Metroid Prime as a series works, isn't like a traditional FPS at all. Like, locking on adds homing, so why would you not lock on to enemies anyways? This way to play is just really comfy and convenient. Now then, it requires some setup and prep. Before you download, this is designed for the Metroid Prime Trilogy, first and foremost, the Wii version. GameCube versions won't work. Now consult the Dolphin Wiki page on the trilogy to also learn which options you'll want to tweak for the best optimization. Before you launch the game in this modded version of Dolphin, you'll have the option to increase sensitivity, though I found that I had to increase my mouse DPI even higher outside of Dolphin personally. Also, you'll always want hide mouse checkmarked, make sure pause on focus loss and background input are disabled as well. And I prefer windowed because playing in full screen or borderless full screen sometimes has weird issues. And also, yes, yeah, Super Shaders is supported in this version of Dolphin. You'll also have a controller configuration designed to work with this version of Dolphin, and then you're able to customize it even further on your own. Personally, I changed the missile button to shift, and that's really the only control change I wanted to make. I have an MMO mouse, so I was very comfortable with this setup since most everything I could do with Samus was bound to my mouse. Before you hop into one of the games, in-game sensitivity needs to be set to advanced. It helps to disable HUD lag as well. And in the first game, you have to press 1 through 4 to make horizontal aiming work each time you start it. It's a bit of a setup, but after all that, you should be set to relax and enjoy the entirety of these games. A good trade-off for the first time setup. And let me tell you, it plays exactly as you dreamed it would. Aiming feels great, swapping visors feels good. Really, without changing things about the game itself, like the uh, increasing the FOV, it's as great as it's gonna get. However, I came into one big issue while playing, particularly near the end of Metroid Prime, where you get more enemies that require constant beam switching, and even visor switching. Here's how beam switching works. One through four are binded to basically bring up the visor options and move the cursor to in a direction, depending on the button you press. I was blown away realizing how smart that was to do. This works, but it became inconsistent during the faster pace action segments, where I really just want to tap the button and have my next beam there, but there's a lot of moments in the game where you can't swap beams because you're in the middle of something else. So I constantly found myself not holding the button long enough. My workaround became binding the beam switching buttons, one through four, to removing the speed limit on Dolphin, effectively making the game run faster when switching beams so that it was more consistent. This generally is just a complaint about the Metroid Prime trilogy, not the mod itself, since this was not an issue in the original version of the game. This changed things though and made the game far more enjoyable to explore because it was feeling like the real difficulty was the controls and not the game. I heavily recommend doing this, but this solution is kind of an unpolished one though. I know nothing about how this mod technically works, but I'd think that a good solution would be binding Samus's beam switching to a button combo that Dolphin can execute in one keybind, or alternatively enable beam switching or visor switching to cancel out whatever is keeping Samus from normally swapping. Which both these solutions I'm saying would probably be done through like a gecko code or something like that. But yeah guys, I really just wanted to bring some attention to this because I found it was th this mod exists, it was just really tucked away on a, a subreddit, so I wanted to just bring it out there, make sure people knew about it, and can enjoy it. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.